This is the Leica M7. Produced between 2002 and 2018, this was the first and the last rangefinder of its kind. The successor to the M6 TTL, the externals of it might look similar, but internally it's a completely different beast. Unlike other Leicas, which feature a fully mechanical shutter, the Leica M7 has an electronically controlled one, and with that comes a huge benefit of automatic shutter speeds. But before we get there, let's start with how big it is. Here's its size compared to a roll of film, a point and shoot camera, the Ricoh GR1, a Canon DSLR, and a Pentax 6.7. Compared to an SLR, it is relatively small, but it is heavy and dense. With a roll of film in it, it weighs just under 644 grams, which is slightly heavier than the Leica MP, which comes in at 620 grams. It measures just under 14 centimeters long and 3.4 centimeters thick. It's worth noting that it is very slightly taller than the Leica MP or the classic M6, and the difference is quite hard to perceive over video, but in real life, the M7 does feel slightly taller. It comes in two different finishes, a silver chrome finish and a matte black chrome finish, which is what we have here. And here's how that finish compares to a glossy black paint like a MP. At the front of the camera, you'll see a viewfinder window, and most of these Leica M7s come in a 0.72 magnification, but there are also 0.58 and 0.85s around. The differences are a 0.58 is more suited to 28mm lenses, while a 0.85 is more suited with 50mm lenses. Beneath the viewfinder, you'll find a frame line selector switch, and the camera does automatically select which frame lines to use depending on what lens is mounted. So this switch is just for reference. And besides that is the classic Leica red dot, along with the M7 font engraved into the camera, the film rewind switch and the battery door. And a side note here is that this camera takes four batteries instead of the two that say an M6 or an MP requires. On the top of the camera is the film counter window which tells you how many shots you've made, the shutter button and something unique to the Leica M7, a camera on off switch. Its film advance is similar to the M6 with a plastic tip, and its shutter dial is similar to the M6 TTL, but opposite to the M6 Classic. And what that means is say with a Classic M6, or the MP, or even an M3, when you turn the dial clockwise, you'll get a faster shutter speed. But with the M7 and the M6 TTL, turning it clockwise reduces the shutter speed, so it's in a reversed direction as compared to a classic film Leica. The biggest difference that sets the M7 apart is the automatic mode. When it's set to auto, you do still need to manually set your aperture values, but depending on the exposure of the scene, the M7 will then automatically decide what shutter speed to use, going from 1 1,000th of a second down to the slowest shutter speed of 4 seconds. In auto mode, the shutter is also able to work at in-between settings. Say for example, in between 1 1,000th and 500th of a second, say at 750th of a second, the camera can shoot there. But the most interesting feature of the M7 is its ability to still work without a battery. Most electronically controlled cameras are dead without a battery, but the M7 is still able to fire at 1 1 25th and 60th of a second without batteries. So it actually has a hybrid shutter, in that you'll only need to use a battery for all other shutter speeds other than 1 1 25th and 1 60th. It has a hot shoe with through the lens metering just like the M6 TTL and on the left side of the camera is the film rewind knob similar to the one that you'll find in the M4 and the M6 in that it pops out and allows you to quickly rewind the film. At the back of the camera you'll find a made in Germany engraving next to the PC sync port and the viewfinder which does take diopters and you'll also see the ISO dial which goes from ISO 6 to 6400. Here's what it looks like with a Leica 35mm aspherical Sumalux attached. In the hands, it does feel slightly heavier than what I'm used to in the Leica MP, but it still feels dense and solid like a Leica should. If you're looking for the manual rangefinder experience, but if you want that extra option of being able to shoot in aperture priority, I don't think the M7 will let you down. That's all for today's video. Jeremy here. If you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.